Good morning, folks. This is Todd Colburn of Cal Poly Pomona with the Aerospace Structure Series. This little video is on stresses, introducing the concept of stress. Let's think back to statics for a moment when we learned about forces and moments. And let's investigate what those forces and moments did to a cross section. Suppose we have a section that can, is constructed of a rectangular section like this. And let's say that we have a force applied to it. Now we studied problems like this in statics and we saw that no matter where we take a section cut, whether we take a section cut through this plane or this plane or this plane, since this is the only force on the member, we'll call it P, we see we could cut this anywhere and draw a free body diagram. For example, we call this A, B, C, D, E. If we take a little segment D, E, and we had a force applied here, we know that the internal force here is P. If we take the next segment, which runs from C to D, then we find that once again, we still have P and so on throughout the member. And any of these cross sections, while we learned in statics about the force action reaction pairs, we see that this force has to be carried by that section. Now, if we take that section, so this is a force we can think of a stress as a force intensity. So if we wanted to look at, well, what is, if this force P is carried on this cross section at E, what is the stress? Well, it's the force intensity, which means the stress, we use symbol sigma is very commonly used for stresses. And in aerospace, often we'll use a lowercase f for stresses. So we're gonna start seeing in this content that we're gonna use the symbol P for forces a lot more commonly rather than Fs, which we saw maybe back in physics. And the reason is that in aerospace, we're gonna use a lowercase f, which has to do with a calculated stress and an uppercase stress, which has to do with an allowable. We'll get more into that in a bit. So our stress, which could be used either of these symbols is simply the force intensity. The average stress then is just the force over the area P over A. What is the force? It's P. What is the area? It's just this dimension. We call that B or the width. We'll call this dimension H for the height. So that's just P over BH. That is the average stress in the section. Now, if we actually grab this, let's say we grab it with a pair of tweezers right in the middle. Let's take a closer look at this cross section grab it right in the middle and apply that force here, we see, well, actually this force is acting over this tiny little area. We're gonna ignore that for now. That's a localized effect that will dampen out as we move away. We'll study that further later. But the force, if we just imagine that this force spreads evenly across the whole cross section where this is the width B and this is the height H, then our average stress is just P over that area, BH, and that is the stress, it's the force intensity. That is our first concept that we need to understand. So since that is true, our units of stress, our force in English units, pounds over area, inches squared. So the stress is in units of pounds per inches squared, which we call PSI. If we have a one PSI would be one pound per square inch. A thousand PSI would be a thousand pounds per square inch. Now that brings us to another unit, another common unit used in aerospace and industry is KSI. That's a thousand PSI. So if we have a stress of 13,000 PSI, that equates to 13.00 KSI. These two terms are equivalent. This is PSI and this is thousand PSI are called KSI, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now in, uh, in SI units, that would be meganewtons per meter squared is the units in SI. We'd have meganewtons 
per meter squared, actually newtons per meter squared is the unit, newtons per meter squared, but for the magnitudes are such that we're usually dealing with mega newtons, which we would call a newton per meter squared is called a Pascal, and therefore a mega newton per meter squared would be a mega Pascal. So these are the kind of units we're dealing with, pounds per square inch or newtons per square meter. You got that? So we saw already that if we have a cross section, let's just take this cross section here with a little force on it, we saw that the force, P, right, the average stress we saw was P over A, right? Now, if we look and say, well, actually this cross section is composed of a number of little areas like this, and each one is carrying a little element of delta P on that little element of delta A, and we've got these all through the section, okay? All these little tiny areas, then we could say, well, if we say the delta P for delta A, that is the stress, the change in P with respect to the change in area. And if we take the limit as that delta A goes to zero, right? And that's the definition of stress. That's what the stress is. So as our, when we started with the average, we said we got P over this area, but really if you wanna know what the detailed stress distribution is, you would have to make this, break this up into smaller and smaller pieces. And for each one, you would take a little change in elemental force over the change in area, and that gives you what the stress is on that element. Now we can rearrange this then, and we can say, well then, that means the stress times the change in area is equal to the delta P, right? So we can say, well, the total force on the segment would be to integrate the stress with respect to the area. This is area here. So if we say, okay, let's look at our segment again. And if we say, well, this is actually broken up into tiny little areas and each little area, let's pull one out. Each little area has a little unit of delta stress on it and or has a little unit of stress on it. And each of those is on a little unit of delta A, that stress with respect to delta A. If we sum up the stress, times that delta A plus the stress on this one times its delta A plus the stress on that one times its delta A. This is the summation of the stresses on each little delta A. So we could say the stress on each with the little delta A of each. If we summed all those up and that's what integration does, summing over the areas, it does that in a continuous fashion so we don't miss anything. You can do this discreetly by just saying, well, let's break this up into four blocks. Then our summation would have four pieces or more or more. What this integral does is say, we're gonna break it up continuously for all little increments of stress, all little increments of area. And that's what this integral does. That gives us the total force on the section, okay? Now we'll come back to this when we start looking at stress concentrations, but for now we can realize for most of our purposes, when we have a cross section, just P over the area is sufficient. Got that? These are some basic ideas for stress. We have to understand what the force is on any given cross section, what the area is that that force acts on, and the average stress is simply P over A force over area. This means that a stress is really a force intensity. We're going to look more at these. We're going to find out that stresses aren't always so easy to calculate, but this P over A formula is very useful for a wide number of engineering problems. Make sure you understand this first as you go onward into the other content. Enjoy.